The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Edgar Chagualungu, President of the Republic of Zambia. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Edgar Chagualungu, President of the Republic of Zambia, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency, Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garcia. President of the 73rd Session of the United Nations General Assembly, the United Nations General Secretary, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me join other world leaders to congratulate Your Excellency, Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces, on your election as President of the 73rd Session for the United Nations General Assembly. Zambia fully supports your endeavor to diligently discharge the responsibility of this assembly. Zambia is delighted to know that after over a decade, a woman has yet again taken up this important seat as the fourth female president of the General Assembly since the establishment of this world body. As the United Nations, celebrates its 73rd anniversary next month, there is need for it to forcefully continue to promote international peace, cooperation, and the development of societies which are devoid of hunger, poverty, and disease. In doing so, we should endeavor to explore new ideas and best practices to meet expectations of our people. This is against the backdrop of effective and efficient use of limited global resources. We are therefore confident that, Madam President, you will bring to the fore a fresh dimension as we jointly seek solutions to the challenges that confront us economically, socially, and politically. Madam President, you may wish to note that since the formation of the United Nations 73 years ago, it is our belief that Africa should have made remarkable progress. Yet, until recently, Africa's economic structure has only changed minimally. This is a concern which has been voiced at both continental and global fora. The effective implementation of the United Nations 2030 Agenda and the African Agenda 2063, therefore, present huge opportunities for Africa to revitalize its growth and accelerate its transformation. Both frameworks seek to achieve inclusive growth, sustainable development, peace, and security for the African continent. Madam President, Zambia's development path is guided by its Vision 2030. Through the implementation of the seventh National Development Plan, the focus of this plan is to transform Zambia into a prosperous middle-income country by the year 2030. To achieve this, there are many hurdles which we must overcome. Our economy, just like many other developing economies, largely mono-economies, hence the need to diversify. We are therefore determined to address the challenges by creating a diversified and resilient economy driven by agriculture, tourism, and energy sectors, amongst others. This will be supported by a robust infrastructure development program. And in this regard, there is need for strengthened mutually beneficial partnerships in the context of South-South cooperation 
and in addition, regional and development cooperation, which remains crucial to unlocking diversified growth. Madam President, apart from being dedicated to the implementation of the Africa Union and United Nations Agenda 2063 and 2030 respectively, Zambia is equally committed to achieving sustainable development goals on climate change and the Addis Ababa Action Agenda on financing for development. It is for this reason that my government has mainstreamed these global development agendas in the seventh National Development Plan. I am glad, Madam President, to note that my government has been making steady progress in infrastructure development as a key enabler for recovery and improvement. We are also implementing several policy and structural reforms under the Economic Stabilization and Growth Program, commonly known as ESGP. As we pursue these goals, we are mindful of the challenges in mobilizing financing for development, as well as declining donor funding, especially to least developed countries and landlocked developing countries. We therefore call upon all partners to work with us so that together we can effectively implement the sustainable development goals for the good of our people. It is gratifying to note that the second United Nations high-level conference on South-South cooperation to be hosted in Buenos Aires, Argentina in March 2019 will present an opportunity for us to register significant progress on development cooperation amongst countries of the South. Madam President, turning the issue of peace, since 1945, the United Nations and the international community have been consistently and strongly advocating the need for the preservation and promotion of peace. Further, Recent development frameworks have also given prominence to protecting global peace and security. My government, therefore, fully supports Resolution 2378 of 2017, whose focus is on peacekeeping reforms. Zambia also commits to the Action for Peacekeeping, FOP initiative of the United Nations Secretary General as contained in the Declaration of Shared Commitments for United Nations Peacekeeping. I'm glad to further state that my government has in the recent past increased its participation in UN peacekeeping operations and presently is one of the major contributors to peacekeeping missions. In addition, Zambia is also one of the countries which has taken the lead to engender peacekeeping operations by increasing women participation. We also join other member states in saluting the gallant men and women in blue helmets for the sacrifices they are making to foster peace in the world. In our continued efforts to contribute to regional and world peace, Zambia recently took up the chairmanship of the organ on politics Defense and Security of the Southern African Development Community, SADAC. I can only assure you that we will discharge this duty with utmost dedication for the cause of regional and world peace and security. Madam President, on gender equality and women's economic empowerment, I wish to reaffirm my government's commitment to eliminating all forms of violence and discrimination against women and girls. We are making efforts to review and enact new legislation and policies which are gender responsive. Progress is also being recorded on the implementation of 50-50 enrollment policy, as now schools are compelled by law to enroll an equal number of girls and boys. Since last year, 2017, my government commenced the distribution of free sanitary towels to girls in rural and urban areas in an effort to 
to retain them in school. This program was introduced to improve, to improve girls' access to education as lack of proper sanitary towers oftentimes limits their access to school. In addition, we have continued implementing the reentry policy for pregnant girls. This program is a success as a number of girls' children have been returned in school after giving birth. This measure, we believe, is critical in improving equal opportunities for our girl child. We have no doubt that these and many other efforts will lay a firm foundation for the attainment of sustainable development goals, and in particular, goal number five on gender equality and women's economic empowerment. Madam President, the world has continued to witness unprecedented massive movement of refugees and migrants, resulting in political, social, economic, and human rights ramifications in a number of host countries. Let me underscore the importance of collaborative efforts of the global community in tackling issues of the current refuge and migration crisis. This will ensure safe, orderly, and regular migration anchored on respect for human rights and the humane treatment of migrants and refugees. We therefore welcome the convening of the Conference on International Migration in December this year, and we look forward to the unprecedented adoption of the Global Compact on Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. We are hopeful that this will provide us an opportunity to improve the global governance of migration and refugees, as well as strengthening their contribution to sustainable development. In this regard, I wish to underline the need for the principle of sharing responsibility on hosting and supporting the world's refugees and migrants. Going forward, I wish to reaffirm my government's commitment to international obligations under 1951 Convention and its 1967 protocol relating to the status of refugees. Under these instruments, Zambia will continue to play a meaningful role in assisting people affected by conflict situations and, indeed, other human rights violations. Madam President, I wish to now recognize the decision by the Secretary General and his team for the progress made in undertaking the mandate on the reform of the United Nations Development System, Management and the Peace and Security Pillar. However, we are deeply concerned that negligible progress has been made on reforming the Security Council. It may also be recalled that in 2000, during the Millennium Summit, world leaders called for an early and logical conclusion to the negotiations on the Security, reform, on the Security Council reform. Five years later, during the World Summit, leaders expressed concern at the slow pace of progress and urged negotiations on the Security Council reform to be expedited. To date, we are still no closer to an agreement on such a fundamental issue which seeks to make the United Nations truly representative, democratic, and effective. Next year, 2019, will mark the 40th anniversary since the item on the reform of the Security Council was put on the agenda of the General Assembly. Madam President, you have been entrusted by world leaders to lead the process of reforming the Security Council. Therefore, we are hopeful that you will report substantive progress by the time we mark the 40th anniversary next year. I wish to reiterate that Africa remains steadfast and united in its core for two permanent members of the Security Council and five non-permanent seats. Not only is this a matter of common decency and correction of a historical injustice, Madam President, it is also a matter of restoring Africa's dignity. Currently, Africa remains the only continent without permanent representation in the Security Council. In this vein, we support the call for a non-permanent seat for small island developing countries whose challenges are unique. It is thus imperative that their, respective, their perspective be incorporated as a new dimension into the UN's approach 
to international peace and security. I thank you for your attention. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Zambia for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the head of state.